All right, so now that we're all here, welcome. Let's begin. So today's session is about APM and inputs. Let's go over what that actually means and why we're going to have that session. So the reason why is quite simple. I have been coaching for a long time now, and I've noticed that is one of the main issues that nobody talks about in the coaching community. And even if they do, it's more like for show of purposes or, you know, there might be a Reddit thread of, oh, look at Faker's APM in the World Championship. But then everyone treats it like a gimmick, yes? Like something that is only needed at, at that level or something that is just cool to look at but not really necessary. Or they will make memes about how unnecessary it is. And there's kind of a, I would say, misconception slash toxic discussion about the subject. So... I wanted, I think I'm in a special position myself, teach a lot of mechanics and, and it's one of my, or my strongest point because of my background. So I think I have a lot to say about the APM slash input subject and how important it is. So starting by what APM means, what I want you to do is look at my screen and you will follow what I'm doing here, if you can. I assume everyone here has a Windows PC. So this is how you do it in Windows, I'm not so sure about Mac. So we'll do it for Windows. So if everybody is watching, what we're going to do, most people here, if you're my student in the past, people such as Jeststream, who have had coaching sessions with me, I think you have already done this. But for anyone that hasn't, um, you need to come to Windows, right? And come to Windows settings. And then you type mouse. And what we're going to do here is we're going to disable mouse acceleration. Because today's session is about inputs and... Inputs require you to have muscle memory. If you have mouse acceleration activated, it is impossible to have a good muscle memory because by definition, what that does is it changes your DPI and fielding of your mouse every single frame in a really awkward fashion. So that's really, really bad. Okay. So you come to mouse settings and then you come to additional mouse options here. After coming to mouse options, you will come to pointer options, which is the third tab. And this checkbox here called Enhance Pointer Precision that has to be disabled. That is, um, I would say, a very old, archaic setting that it was made. You know, guys, what why this was invented? It was made back in the day of the rubber ball <laughs> mouse. When the mouse used to have <laughs> a rubber ball inside, this setting was to make those mouse feel better. Okay, those mice. So what this does is basically it changes your sensitivity um, every second based on how fast you're moving the mouse. So it's impossible to gather muscle memory. It is impossible to become very good at inputs with it. Now there's a caveat. There are actually some pro players in esports that have begun using mouse acceleration recently, but not the Windows one. The Windows one is impossible to control. Very bad. So there's a program called Raw Excel that I have tried for games like shooters. I don't think it's good for League. But just so that you know, some people use this program instead, which is like a custom mouse acceleration. You can see the acceleration curve of your mouse there. So when I move it slowly, you see that my DPI, this is my DPI. So when I move it slowly, my DPI will remain the same, right? But when I move it fast, it will jump, my DPI will go up. That is what Windows Mouse Excel is doing. But instead, Windows Mouse Excel will do it like, it's impossible to control. Nobody knows how it works. The curve is all over the place. I don't know who did it. So if you ever actually want to most excel, you can use this program. I just don't think it's necessary for a game like League. I think you just get used to having most excel off. Again, it's most settings, additional most options, pointer options, right? If you have any questions, please type it or unmute and tell me. You can unmute 100%. Okay. So coming back to APM and inputs. Um, APM just means actions per minute. Everybody knows that. It means how many times you're inputting commands each second or minute, whatever you want to call it. Um, and essentially, it is a way to track how many times you are doing stuff in game. So it's not just your clicks, it is also your, basically your mouse, um, right click, left click, and also the keyword, right? Like every time you press a spell, the space for the tab, right? So let's, let's do an exercise here, which is kind of funny, which is, I googled APM in League of Legends Reddit, right? And I want to see what people are saying about the APM in League of Legends and what they think about it, right? So, 
this guy is asking, does APN matter in League of Legends? Uh, this guy is saying, well, this is an old post, right? But this guy is saying, APM doesn't matter that much. Uh, having fast APM in StarCraft usually means blah, 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 right? But for the most part, League of Legends is not technically difficult. So this is a misconception that arose. This post is 10 years ago, right? So this was back when the flash kick from Lee Sing wasn't even discovered yet. So how can you say that back then, right? So you could say, well, this guy didn't know better. It was 10 years ago, right? But then you look at newer posts that are not 10 years ago. So what's a good APM number to aim for? And this is one year ago, okay? But look at this guy, one year ago. For a MOBA game, it's not a useful stat to consider. APM is almost irrelevant in League, okay? In League, being calm and slowing things down is the thing to do. So I would love to know the ELO of these players, why they are saying this. And I also think it's a server cultural thing. I think mostly NA players will tell you this and uh, Latin American players will tell you this from my experience. I have coached those and I play in those servers. Whereas a player from Brazil or US or China or Korea will not tell you this. And I think this uh, um, hurts a lot to the development of the, re of the region. But what do you guys think about this post? Like, do you agree? Do you disagree? I want you guys to type what you think about posts like this. Like, APM is almost irre irrelevant in League. Um, then we have, I, I wouldn't worry too much about your APM, focus on improving your CS. Don't worry about APM. So everyone's saying the same thing to it. This is uh, also a, you know, like a coaching server, so to speak, right? Like you're supposed to help students here. So I'm, I'm curious, what do I think about this? If anyone can type or unmute and tell me, what's your opinion on the matter? Well, I think it's gonna be wrong since you are almost like pointing towards. <laughs> right, but I'm gonna I'm I'm not here to sell the snake oil. I actually have a reason why this is wrong, and it's my experience, and I have been very successful with applying the concepts of increasing it and and being better at it. Um, even this guy, which is kind of open-minded, you know, don't listen to us who say it doesn't matter. Okay, good, it does, yeah, but you need pretty medium APM. You're good with 100, 150. Well, uh, yikes. It's okay. I'm gonna tell you something. I recently, yesterday, actually, I got banned in one of my Smurf accounts for scripting because people actually thought it was scripting because I was dodging so much stuff, okay? Literally, I posted it in the server. You can see it. And yeah, okay. Your account has been suspended due to use of third party tools, cheating programs. Um, and I wanna show you those very games. I want to show you the APM I was having. I recorded them. And you will see my overall APM over the game. In certain quadra kills, it went as high as 700. Okay. So it makes sense that I'm going to get reported and banned because people are not used to look, seeing that. So let's start then. What, what, what it means and how it works, okay? So <clears throat> there are different kinds of APM, and this is what the misconception from Reddit arises from. Because not all APM is necessary and that is true. And not all APM is good and that is true. Because something happens with APM. As you increase... Why why do people say that you don't need higher APM? It's because people assume, and it's usually correct, that if you increase your APM, right? If this is APM. When you increase it more, okay, you lose control, don't you? It's just like I read, when you do stuff faster, you can control them less. And when you have less APM, you can you have more control, right? So what people are hinting at at Reddit is control is more important than having faster actions, therefore you shouldn't have fast actions. But that is just a fallacy, because what if you could increase your APM while keeping the control? And that is why we're here today. The idea is to learn how to increase your APM without losing control on the subject and the matter. Because the Reddit comments all go like, oh yeah, but it's better to just be, take your time, be slow, do things correctly. And that is like true. But at the same time, that that is not necessary because you can very much increase your APM, do things faster while still trying to control things a lot. In fact, the best players, if you watch 
coming back to the Faker thing, even though his APM is so high, or any Korean player, any pro player that has high APM, or even a player like me, even our, if our APM is high, we are not really losing control of anything, right? We're not really misclicking on minions, we're not really doing anything like that. So, therefore, that's where the fallacy comes from. And it only comes from practice and trying to do it. And the thing is, people just want to be, um, I guess, I, I wouldn't say lazy, but, you know, in their comfort zone, right? And that's why they don't break out of this. So I will show you examples. I have a, a really clear example of how this looks like. I had a student that was playing Sever, right? And he wasn't doing as much damage as he could. There's one thing that happens when I coach a, a player that is lower elo, the lower elo the player is the least they will use their max attack speed. So let's say you have lethal tempo and insane amount of attack speed. They will still out attack as if... You know how with lethal tempo your out attacks will start going faster and faster, right? Instead, despite their out attacks being able to go faster, when their lethal tempo is activated, they will still out attack in the same speed that they had in the first moment. Why? Because their RPM is so low that they are still clicking at this rate. So this is one of the many, many, many ways that I've seen people lose a lot of um, damage uh, or otherwise just do worse because of worse APM, right? So I'm going to show you what happened because what happened is that I told the, the student you need to click faster. You need to like actually do damage. You have lethal tempo stack. So you know what happened? He started clicking faster, but then he lost control. You know what that means? He started misclicking on minions a lot and he started basically losing a lot of uh, damage because he was clicking minions and he wasn't using the spell shield on Sivir, wasn't using W, wasn't resenting his out attack, but he was doing all of that when he was out attacking slower. So by trying to make him increase his APM and click faster, he started losing a lot of, you know, control over his character. But the thing is, that's the only way you can do it. You gotta do it. Because if you are always in this zone where you are in your comfort zone, you're never going to increase your APM. Whereas if you are constantly here, you are going to lose control until you get used. And when you get used, it's just like in Osu, okay? When I play Osu, when you play a faster map, it's like telling me, oh, you never need to play a faster map. You don't have enough stamina for it. You're going to lose control. You don't have enough aim. Your aim will shake. Well, yeah, but you do it a hundred times. You do it a thousand times. And suddenly you have more control over it and you can. The human body can adapt. It's proof of it thing is in league people have this mindset of like oh yeah you can never improve it and i don't know why so basically i promise you that yes this student in that, in that session which i will show you now i have it here so this was the student session he did very well with Sivir actually and so as you can see here i want you to pay close attention to how the guy was so the person was gold any I want you to play, pay close pay close attention to how he's gonna he's gonna increase his APM here. I you cannot hear my voice, but in the recording I was telling him attack, attack, attack because in the previous fights he would like kite at a really low attack speed even though he had lethal tempo activated and Yumi heal like he had like you know 2.5 attack speed and he will still kite at like 1.5. So he was losing half of the damage. I was spamming saying him like please. Do damage, do damage, attack, attack faster, 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 faster. And as such, what happened is that he began... Look at how much control he lost over the character because of attacking faster, okay? So he didn't shield, and now look at what happens. So now he's trying to attack faster, but now he will be... See? He hits the minion. So he hit the minion, he starts walking in a straight line, didn't shield the more the E, which he should have because he was busy clicking so much, right? So this is what losing control looks like. Again, see that again and you will see. Let's put this in slow motion. And look at how he didn't shield what he should have shielded, there he could have shielded. And it's hard, right? Because now he's attacking correctly, but there are no minions, so he can focus on that. And as, as soon as minions come, He's still not shielding, right? Then he shields pretty much nothing. He didn't shield anything at all. And now we are hitting minions because we are trying to attack so fast that you lose control. But this is necessary. I promise you the next time this happens, maybe he loses one out attack less. 
and then next time he does it better. So you need to practice increasing your RPM and being faster until you gain control over it. It's just a practice thing. <clears throat> okay. So the next fight, he did the opposite. So look at what happened the next fight. In this fight, he actually reset the auto attack, didn't he? But he lost control. In this fight, he's actually gonna calm down like Reddit suggests. And now what's gonna happen is that he is actually not gonna even reset the auto attack because his APM is gonna be so low. And now he's gonna do the opposite, low APM, which means sure, he doesn't mean the, miss the auto. But look, no auto attack reset, walks, he walks in a straight line, he shields nothing. So see the issue? That's what low APM looks like. So if you ask me, I much rather have the second, the, the first one. Because if he does it a lot, then he will not miss that out. Okay. So the Reddit comments and the misconception in the community come from the fact that there are what we what I would call like filler or detrimental APM and there, then there's like good APM, right? So any kind of APM should be good if it's not hurting you and it's actually making you get used to it and improve. So people ask when they watch things like LS, they ask why they are pressing the Z key on the keyboard so much and pulling up the chat or pressing tab so much. The reason is just as a filler, what we call filler APM, okay? So I think it's, in his case it's detrimental because he's pressing the Z and the tab so much that then when you watch him walk, he never dodges anything or auto attacks properly or kites properly. He doesn't, for example, cancel the auto attack animation. Why? Because I think in his brain is already filled with too many presses of other unimportant keys. And I think he hurts the community in this way, because what happens is the community therefore gets this misconception that APM is useless, because they see him with such high APM and he doesn't dodge stuff. Like he, he's not playing like at a top level despite having such high APM. And they go like, well, see, it's useless. Well, no, it's because he's paying too much attention to pressing tab and C key on the keyboard and not enough to like clicking close to a champion, dodging, increasing the APM of auto attacks. So he's like increasing APM of things that don't matter. Nemesis does the same, but in his case, he has a higher threshold of like his brain can handle more different things at the same time. So despite doing that, he can still dodge a lot of stuff. So that's the difference between them. So, you can tell the APM of a player by watching the replay, that's the thing. If you watch an LS replay, you would think that the guy has very low APM. But when you watch his stream, he has high APM. So that means that there's a lot of APM that is useless. Or filler. Not useless, but filler, and he's not taking advantage of it. Whereas when you watch Nemesis, you, you see the high APM. Or when you watch something like Gumayushi, you see the high APM in the champion. Or when you watch... If you want to do an exercise after this session, go watch... Go watch Cloud9 Blaver clear the jungle, the jungle with Graves. And then go watch Canyon clear the jungle with Graves. And you will see what I mean. It looks like a different champion with different animations. Okay. And you see the results in the game. Okay. So this session is going to be more like how to use increase the useful APM. Not the filler one. I'm not going to tell you to spam Z on the keyboard. It's going to be more like the, the actual important APM. Okay. So let's do a fun exercise now. I'm going to tell you why increasing the APM is good now. So it's two things. What we call readiness. My handwriting is dog shit today. Readiness and execution. These are the two things that increasing the APM will increase. Okay? So readiness means... There's a misconception in League. People think that when you dodge a lot of things, it means you have insane reaction time. I, I have gone through this myself. People say like, oh, you have a lot of reaction time, blah, blah, blah. And it's not true. 90% of dodging in League or, or reacting to something, let's say that somebody shows up and you instantly flash out of him or something, um, that is not reflexes. It is actually being ready. It is prediction and being ready. And that is what APM gives you. Readiness. So let's do an exercise. I will show you how, even if you are bronze, even if you are gold, even if you are silver, all of us here are humans and our actual reaction time is not that different. So you will see how that is not what is at play here. Reaction time is not what is at play. So let's go to human benchmark. 
and you can do this exercise with me and you will see that everybody gets so more or less the same within 100 milliseconds of each other i would say the lowest person here will get 100 milliseconds more than the highest person which is not a lot so you can go there and you can do the reaction time test basically when the thing turns green you need to click it and the average says here that the average is 273 but that's for non-gamers i think the gamer average is 230-ish <clears throat> so you can try it and tell me how it you can post the screenshots i'm interested So that's my reaction right now. <clears throat> and I assume yours is gonna be similar to this one, not too not too different. Maybe a couple of them is higher, but not too much. So let's say you get 200. That 40 difference is not enough to make up for why I'm dodging more, right? Because even if I had I had 20, 20, 30 ping, right? That means that I wouldn't be able to dodge if I had 40 more, like 60. I don't think so. So there's something else at play, it's not reaction time, right? So this is where APM is going to help you so much. Okay. So as you can see, there's not a lot of difference between us. Like, we have 180, we have 200, so... That 30 difference in MS shouldn't be enough, so this guy has almost the same as me. 176. And by the way, I have played Osu for like, you know, <laughs> 12 years. So you would think that you would increase past that, but clearly... I didn't increase it more than a couple 30 ms or something. You know why? Because reaction time is actually a hardwired limit in the human brain. Because the nerve signal takes actual time to travel from your brain to your hand and back and forth. It's a round way trip it has to do. It travels around 50 meters per second on your arm. And so no matter how much you practice, you're not going to make the electricity go through your arm faster. Okay. So that's not what is at play. There are two things that make your reaction faster, actually. One is reaction time, but the other one is what we call processing time. Okay, Processing time because, let's say this is your brain. This is how my brain looks like. <laughs> Kappa. Um, and let's say this is your hand. Reaction time would be like just this part, right? Whereas processing time, the signal has to travel back and forth in your arm, but then it has to do some processing here, right? Decide what to do. Because notice that this, this website is just telling you to click, so it's kind of deleting. Why are we all so similar here? What? Yeah, no, this is actually a thing. If you do it with a part of your body that is closer to your head, you will get faster. That is actually a thing. The signal has to travel less. I'm not making it up. In fact, if you do it with your feet, or if you're taller, you will have slower reaction time. If you're taller, you actually have slower reaction time. Like my brother is like 20 centimeters taller than me, he will have slower reaction time with his arm, okay? The signal has to travel more, period. Um, and if you do it with your feet, it will take 10, 20 ms more than if you do it with your hand, because it has to travel more, okay? So... What's happening here is that we're all so similar, so you see how this people say that pro players have like insane reaction time, but you'll see how we're so similar in reaction time actually. So it's actually not true. So this part from the head to the hand is almost the same in everyone, like you know, not the same, but you know, it's a couple milliseconds within. So actually what's different between a pro player or between you and me guys is this part, which is the processing time, which is when you decide what to do with the signal that you were given. And this test doesn't doesn't include this part because all you gotta do is click, so there's no decision. Now imagine if the test was more about four different squares and they show like a letter and you gotta decide what color to press based on each letter. Then you gotta process. Now there I promise you that we will have different um, numbers, you and I. Or in Osu, for example, I can read what is called approach rate 11 or 10 and you probably can't until you play also for like a couple months. And you will say, well, is your reflexes just high? No, it's just I'm processing it faster, okay? It's not reflexes. So how does APM help with this? I mentioned readiness and execution. This is the readiness. Well, take your monitor. In your monitor, 
you um, Jetstream very well said mentioned that if you have a better monitor with higher refresh rate, your reflexes will go like faster, right? So why is that? Well, let's say that you have a monitor with 60 hertz refresh rate, and this is every frame of the monitor. By the way, if you don't want to do the math and really try hard about this, when your monitor has 60 hertz or FPS, whatever you want to call it, the time between each frame is 16 milliseconds, okay? <clears throat> so, can anyone tell me why if I get a 144 refresh monitor or a 240 refresh monitor, I will actually react faster to stuff? <laughs> Is it because the information will come to your eyes quicker? Right. If you get the data that something happened faster. Yeah, sort of. So th the thing is, imagine a Morgana Q binding comes here. With a 16ms monitor, you will probably have to wait like, you know, 12ms to see the binding. Whereas if you increase the frames, you increase the chance that a frame comes right after the skill shot comes. And you see it instantly. It's a chance thing. There is a chance that the Morgana binding comes just right before the frame. But it's inconsistent. Not only, it's very inconsistent, right? That's the, the other thing. If, if your frame rate is low. So APM will work with the same brain. In the, uh, APM will work the same way in our brains. At the risk of becoming pseudoscience here, I have studied this subject for like 12 years uh, with a lot of people. And this is what I found, in my opinion. I'm not a neuroscientist or anything, but this is my opinion on the topic and how it happens. Let's say that you have a low APM and a high APM. So this is the same as the monitor refresh rate. This is me on low APM. What you need to understand is that the brain doesn't have a refresh rate. So the brain doesn't have a refresh rate, but what, what we do have is a comfortable zone, okay? So what does this mean? If our APM is very low, the Morgana binding comes here, or, and we will not be able to, use, to dodge it until the next, let's call it frame of your APM, or the action, the next action. <laughs> That's where the A comes from. Whereas if we increase the APM, similar to increasing the refresh rate of the monitor, now, when the Morgana binding comes, you're more likely to be prepared slash ready to dodge it. But that's not it. In the cyber example, it gets even better with the APM. Because if you increase your APM, in League, we, call, we have what we call um, windows of opportunity. Which means there, there is usually a frame or a second in which the cyber shield or the cyber Q or the Lucian dash, there's a frame in which it was most optimal to use it. So let's say that this circle here, the, this point here, is like when it was the most optimal to use the uh, random spell of your character. Let's say that here, I coached recently a Lilia player. Let's say that here is, was when the Lilia player should have used the W. You know what happened to the Lilia player? He would still use it like two seconds later. Why? Because his APM was not fast enough or high enough to use the W of Lilia at the same time as he was clicking, moving, using Q, okay? So if your APM is this low, what happens is you can only fit, even if the, the perfect time to do stuff, let's say that the perfect time was like this, this was what you should have done with your spells, like, you know, out attack, W, etc. Instead, he does like this, right? Out attack, W, right? You get the point? The combo is way smaller, does way less damage. Which is what was happening with the Seaver player as well. So I'm gonna show you actually what I mean. You will see. I think this student is not here, but he will watch the session after. So please don't take it as me flaming you. <laughs> I think he will actually like it to have his session here. He's been improving a lot with Lilia. And it was the Lilia player. Where is our Lilia friend? So, yeah. Top, ADC, top, mid lane, top, enemy ADC, this one, Lily. So this is a clear example of what low APM looks like. This is game, I think. Yeah, here. So you will see how in a lot of these fights, he could have used a lot of spells and instead 
he uses them in a very slow fashion. Yeah, this one. This fight is a perfect example. Has Sonya's up, has W, okay? Has W, Sonya's, has Red Smite, has Q. Actually, didn't use W, Sonya's. And this is a clear example of losing control because he was panicking so much. He was trying to use so many stuff and couldn't because his APM was so low that he actually zoomed the camera in. Did you see that? Look at the zoom. You see that? That, to me, as a coach, is a clear example that he cannot control the APM and he cannot go higher. And his brain was not being fast enough in APM-wise to even use W or Sonya's or Smite. Okay? A pro player here would have just int insta WQ, Red Smite, Sonya's, and that's it. He dies, right? So why can't he do it? Well, because the APM is lower. So we gotta improve that. So one of the exercises I gave him is like, yeah, you gotta improve your APM, dude. Because... What's the point of like buying Zonias or Stopwatch and buying a Leandris or whatever if you're not even gonna use your spells? At that point you're using like as if you were what's the point of putting three points in W if you're not even gonna be able to use it because your RPM is so low, right? So this is basically like your cast time for your Q is almost instant, your W has a lot of time when you use it. Oh sorry, it's okay, I just read this now. So Suki said, the initial Q coming out of Morgana is obviously quick, but she has a movement before the Q actually releases from the champion, so you can tell you'll have to dodge within X amount of time given the range variation. Well, I think Thresh was a better example of that. I think Morgana Q has almost no animation before it comes out. It's very fast. I think you just predicted based on the champion's movement on the ground and, and just having game knowledge of when Morgana should throw the Q. So the WQ is almost always very if they are asleep or DPS. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's 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 more like getting into skill order rather than why he missed this play, right? But yes, you are correct. So what gives here? You you see how important it is, right? So coming back to this example, this was his APM, so he couldn't. This was what, what he should have done, you know, like okay, let, let's. So let's say that he should have WQ and then Smite and you know stopwatch. But he couldn't. So he only he only used Q here and then he didn't do anything for a for a couple moments, okay? And that's the other thing. Sometimes in League, like he said very correctly, some, what you notice with a low APM player is that sometimes in League the correct thing to do was like many things at once, right? Like you know, click the, the input on the ground plus the smite, plus the Q at the same time, right? Whereas a low APM player will space it out instead of doing many things at once. And if he tries to do many things at once, he will end up doing things like <laughs> zooming the camera or the clicks will be bad, okay? So let's actually get into practice tool here. So this is the readiness part, okay? So things like what LS is doing, which is pressing Z a lot or Tab a lot, will increase your warm up and readiness a little bit. What increases the readiness the most is clicking a lot and just trying to click back and forth i will show you how so i will get into a random account here give me one second <laughs> it's so see what do you expect what do you mean the guy is super chill i will not support slander <laughs> this is an oce friendly stream i think D dylan is from oce so so tell me a champion guys i'll let you pick a champion don't say Jin because I can't out attack. <laughs> what do you mean even VR? VR VR server has better silk than NA by far. Okay, we can dilution. But VR server is actually cracked in Silky. Um it's just that they don't have money for pro play. Uh let's take random rooms, I don't care. I'm not gonna take boots because I wanna be able to buy boots, so I'm gonna take like random things here. I don't know, doesn't matter. Everybody dies. Some just need a help. Rally's gonna get a rework, did you know, guys? They're gonna do the same thing they did with Diana. They're gonna swap her W and ultimate, I think. I think the slowest attack speed in the game is, is Jin, no? And let's buy some cooldown and I don't know, like a Gale Force and. 30 seconds until minions spawn. Let's buy this, so whenever I go to practice so I like buying these items so I don't crit, so my damage is always the same in order to measure it. I don't know why this is... there we go. Okay, 
perfect. So APM. So this is what a lot of players are doing for APM, which I don't think is good. They're just like spamming Z like this. So this is Z. So when you type and then you, the, you know how the chat goes away. But when you do that. And other players do that. I don't think it's super wrong. Like I only think that's bad if it's preventing you from, from doing other stuff. And it's not the case of Nemesis. So like this. The other thing is spamming tab. And I think spamming tab is better. A lot of players do this. One thing I noticed. Yeah, new icons. One thing I noticed is that a lot of a lot of um, players that I coach that are lower elo, they have they never press tab. So they have zero idea what the the course of the game is going, like you know, the state of the game. You gotta press tab a lot, guys. Not only will it increase your APM, but also it will tell you how the game is going. It will tell you this the power spikes, the levels, the also it will tell you when was the last time the enemy jungle showed on the map, because when he shows the tab will refresh his CS. So it will tell you where was the last time he got seen. So for example, it will also tell you the CS of the jungle, which you can use to count. We can go over that in another session, but you can count the jungle CS and his levels, you know, the exact pathing, right? So, but, but that's more like filler APM, that, what I mentioned by filler, remember? So I'm gonna close this, it's lagging me. What is not filler is what a lot of people do nowadays in ADC roles specifically, and I assume most people here are ADCs. If you watch Gume Yushi play, if you watch any challenger ADCs play, one thing they are doing now that they were not doing before is they're spamming A a lot. So like this. So even when you're just walking, you're just spamming A like that, right? So there's two things I'm doing here to increase my APM. One is I'm spamming my A a lot between each pick. So A, in case you don't have it binded, um, player movement, A is player attack move, which is the, by default I think it's X. So it's the one that shows you a range. So when you press A, it will show you a range, and then when you click with your left click, it will attack whatever is closer to your click, right? So there, there, right. Okay. And the reason people press A a lot, I will tell you something that I think most people here don't know. There's a bug in League of Legends. Do you know guys how in League, out attacks... Um, in, in online games, right? We have what we call a tick rate, which is the refresh rate of the processor of the server. And in League, I think it's 30. You know how when you click someone out of range, you will walk to the max range and hit him, right? I don't know if you knew this. There's a bug that like when you click someone out of range, it will actually, what the champion will do is it will get in range and it will do this. Every tick of the 30 tick of the server, it will ask the server, am I in range? And if the answer is yes, it will auto attack. So here it won't. So it's actually random because sometimes, you know what will happen? It will ask if you're in range when it's too late. So you will actually lose range. So like this, look. Look at this. This one was a lucky one. And I auto attacked at the board right on the edge. That was a really good one. But if you repeat the exercise many times. And actually if you do it without boots, which will be even easier to see. Now I'm gonna press A again. See? I'm closer now. Totally random. I lost range randomly. Because the server just asked. See? There I lost a little bit less range. And there I lost a lot of range. Look at that. I lost so much range. I lost like 30 range. So how do you prevent this? By never clicking on someone that is out of your range. Instead, what you do is you spam your A, and when you see that the border touches them, then you click like this. Look. Look at how much range I gain if I do this. If you do it, I'm gonna do it pixel perfect so that you see what I mean. You can do it even. Here comes target practice. That's a bit closer. So I wanna get like on the perfect pixel that you can do it. There. So there I can do it, see? So see how I'm getting I'm getting more range here. I can't see anything. You can see. Look at where I, look at where I can out attack from. If I press A. See that? Remember how how deep into his hitbox I was when I out attacked before? Because I clicked from far away. That was it's a huge change, right? Like it sounds silly, but uh, this 30 range difference can mean a lot, right? So that's why, that's reason number one why you would see pro players spam the A on ADC now. Because you want to be able to see like that. I want to be able to 
See how I'm, I, I'm really good at doing it now, but a lot of auto attacks, I'm doing it at the max range by doing that. Whereas if I was doing this... Look at that auto attack! That's bullshit, isn't it? I didn't walk closer, I literally just click out of range. See? Look at how much range I lost this time. It's random. You lose different range each time. Okay. Totally random. Anyway. <laughs> right at the side. That was a nice bonus that you should know. So that's reason number one to spam your ray. But reason number two. Again, I'm buying these two, not crit. Reason number two is because it will make you ready to increase. It will increase your APM and make you just ready to do more stuff. And then what you also do is you spam your click close to your champion. So this is the one of the most important parts. When you click closer to your champion, you increase your APM. Try it yourself if you want, guys. Try it yourselves. Go to practice tool and try to here. Go to practice tool Life. and try to click really far away from your champion. It's a hell of a thing. What you'll notice is because the mouse has to travel further distance, the APM will go lower. And now do this, start trying to go closer and closer to your champion each time and you will see how you will start being able to go faster. Okay. Seen so much death, I don't even notice it the closer you click to your champion, the faster you will click. That is very good because you will increase your APM. In fact, part of the reason I'm dodging so much, I think, and people are calling me out on that and things like that, is just um, clicking closer to your champion, right? So if you go to outplay it, will show you why is it not opening there we go and so for example this seer game if we go to uh i want to show you an example yeah so look at the example of this seer play You'll see how by clicking close to my champion, I'm being able to dodge a lot of stuff. And when Olaf comes, you know it's kind of a stomp game, but you will see when Olaf comes, I'm able to dodge his Q. The Olaf Q even melee range. And it's not reaction time, it's just... What? Show me a play. It's not reaction time, it's just looking at the... Um, being prepared by, by increasing the APM. And clicking close. By the way, we're doing another thing there, which is called distance kiting, which is we're intentionally not kiting him to get out of the range of Cyrold and Olaf next Q. There, see? Because if we kite, we're gonna get hit by the Q. So sometimes you wanna do what's called... There are two types of kiting, distance kiting and damage kiting. Damage kiting is the normal one in which you prioritize damage over distance and you lose distance. Uh, uh, distance kiting is the one that you prioritize distance over damage and you lose damage. Okay. The one... The, Sometimes you want to do damage uh, distance cutting, for example, when you're getting hit by Nocturne's E and you want to get out of the E channel. So if you auto attack, you're going to get feared. Okay. Okay, so coming back to the thing, click closer to your champion, right? I'm a high sense guy. Well, that's. Depends what you mean. If you deactivated Windows Max Gazelle, which is what I told you, and you don't have a DPI over 3000 ish, you should be fine. Like 2000. High hundred, I would say it's the limit. More than that, I think it's kind of bad. It depends on your in-game sensitivity. This is all considering you have 50 here, right? Okay. So, coming back to APM thing. What will happen is... I actually studied this. Look at this. If you click really far away from your champion... Let's say I click like this. My champion does this movement, right? If we draw an APM graph of this... This is very low APM. That's your APM. Right? And you know what this means? I actually had a student do this. And it was a really nice exercise. Let's see, there's a Serath. And there's a Serath here. And he has the hands above his head channeling the... <laughs> channeling the Serath Q. All he has to do is wait until one of these turns, one of these vertices. And that's when he throws the Q. You know why? Because... Here is where you are the farthest away from your next click. Do you understand what this means, guys? I want you to make you understand this. 
If your APM is very low, in one of these vertices is when you are the farthest away from clicking again. Because each one of these vertices corresponds to each one of your APM actions. So, even a silver player knows this, it's just what feels good. I was coaching a platinum player player every mid into Zerath, and he was clicking really far away and he was getting hit by every Zerath kill shot. And the reason is, each one, okay, each one of these vertices will correspond to each one of your APM clicks, and therefore all Zerath has to do is wait until you turn, and that's when he throws it. Because you are not gonna turn, like, like if you come here, then your mouse is here, you're not gonna turn instantly, right? Even if he throws the Q, you gotta move the mouse all the way from here to here. So, all I gotta do is wait until one of these turns and I throw my skill shot, right? And it's even worse because people will increase the APM, people don't do this. People actually click many times in the same place, which is what we call redundant clicking. Sometimes it's good, but here they do this, right? That's what a low elo player will look like. So from the point of view of Seraph, it's really easy. All I gotta do is wait until one of the turns. Now if I increase my APM, and I start clicking close to my champion, it's gonna look something more like this, right? Like, you know, we're gonna make like, you know, whatever. And this, from the point of view of APM, is gonna be way higher, right? So let me ask you something now. If I'm the Seraph, when do I throw my Q? Kind of impossible, because no matter where I throw it, the player will always be with the mouse ready to dodge really fast. And not only that, the turns, even if he's not ready to dodge, the turns are very fast either way, right? I'm clicking really... Like, wh when do I throw my Q? Right? So this is the main difference and why you should do it. It increases your readiness. Okay, It's all about being ready. Is this clear, guys? And also, it will... It will it will benefit you in many other ways because by just getting higher APM, then you will start being able to do better combos and etc. Right? But then there's the execution part, which is also increasing your APM will increase the damage that you do in the execution, which is the Lilia example, which is the the combos that you do etc. Right? So for example, with Lucian, this matters a lot. In case you guys didn't know, this year I was during a period of four or five months I was Lucian number one in the world in League of Ruffs. Um he's I, I don't think he's my best champion but I have studied him somewhat and you know high, having higher RPM with him helps a lot um, because he's one of those champions that you want to do many things at once so I will show you one example for example there's the burst Lucian combo which is I'm gonna do six out attacks at the same time and if you do it against the wall it's even better because I don't know if you knew when you dash against the wall with Lucian uh, the auto attack comes faster, you know how when you auto attack E is kinda slow, but if you do it against the wall, it's faster, right? So, when you mix that with the other abilities, um, I'm not gonna get into it too much, but you know, you can do a combo where if your APM is high enough, you can actually... And that's 6 auto attacks at the same time, right? And this is even without having attack speed boots, rapid fire cannon, if you had any of those, it would be even faster. In fact, let me show you. I have a rapid fire cannon. This combo is even faster. Right? That's less than a second. And that's all of your abilities. And then you can mix it even with more stuff. Let me remove the. Which is an Lucian thing is that you can actually use your. Your double shot is impossible to cancel, okay? You know how in League of Legends you can accidentally cancel an auto attack like that? Your double shot, I don't know how or why, but it's coded in such a way that it doesn't get cancelled. In fact, this is why you can actually double shot while dashing away or something like... See? And the second auto deck has higher range, which shouldn't happen usually, like it should have gotten cancelled, but it doesn't. It doesn't get cancelled, right? So you know what that means? That you can actually double shot while doing other stuff. So you can double shot one person while hitting the other. And one thing that I discovered that nobody else does, I don't know why, is that you can double shot while ulting, right? So... You can actually hit two people at once by doing that, right? So if your APM is high enough, you can actually mix that in a real combo. Um, you know the, the combo I just told you, this one? The six out attack combo? You know how I run out of spells now? So what I, I could do is like use my ult 
<laughs> At the same time as the last double shot, you will see it's like very broken. Right? It's like you're hitting both at once, right? But your APM needs to be high for that. So that's another thing about the APM. If you're really used to like clicking a lot, then things like this are a no-brainer. They are like, whatever, it's not a big deal, right? Whereas, if you're a player that clicks very slow, never never presses tab, never presses the F keys, also pressing the F keys helps a lot, which is what Faker does. I can't now because no teammates. So, but anyway, you see the point, right? Let's do that once again. I didn't have my cooldowns up. No. Okay. No teammates? What is teammates? Oh, t Fuck you! <laughs> okay, I know my accent is bad. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. You're, 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 you're throwing shade on everyone. Oceania and me. I see, I see. Okay. Um, so we have a drill to finish. I think we're not missing anything. Yeah, also, by the way, I have a lot of students. Um, another thing that I that is saw with a lot of students is that they lose a lot of... You know how I told you that League is all about time windows. The higher reload you go, so if we take a segment of the game that is five minutes long, it's not like you can kill people whenever you want. You will have like certain windows in which you can actually do something. Like, I don't know, you got level two before them, here the jungle came and there's like a one second stun, right? So what happens is the higher your APM is, the more that you can fit inputs and stuff to take advantage of these windows. When I coach a lower the player, what happens is, for example, they will get level two and they are not fast enough in their APM to level up the abilities with the control in the keyboard. And what will happen is that they will do it with a mouse, so then they lost valuable seconds, and now they are not in position to go in anymore. So that's the issue, guys. Okay. Um, I will show you what I mean. That's another thing. You need to level up your abilities with the control, okay? So let's say that I'm just full of salvation. let's say I was level two, but now I got the level three. The idea is that as soon as you get level three, you go in with like, you know, you press Control W and instantly go in like that, right? Wait, um, can you double shot in the middle of double? Can you double? Can you explain what you mean? Like this? That? Yeah, like I was doing this one. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of Lucian. This is what we call the Lucian burst. It's a Lucian four shot, okay? Lucian only has one auto attack reset, which is E. Both Q and W do, do not reset the auto attack animation, okay? So, because E is the only auto attack reset. What you can do with Lucian is you can throw W, and then you have what you have the the four shot, which is right. So you double shot and then E double shot again. And if you if you dash short distance or against the wall, it's even faster. So if you're against the wall again, if you double you from far away, the four shot is just oh, oh my god. Of course I fucked it up. Okay, I'm gonna explain why I fucked it up. I was used to having higher attack speed because I was level six, 16, but now I'm level three. Uh, let's do it properly this time. So I usually do the W sooner, like here approaching, and then when you approach, you can just four shot, right? That's four shot. And the good thing about four shot is that you you proc press the attack if you have it. A lot of people like first strike, but if you proc press the attack, then the Q will do more damage, right? Because that's ninety eight damage. And look at now, one hundred six, right? It's not much, but it helps. It's more damage because I proc press the attack. <clears throat> so, if you 4-shot, the best thing you can do with Lucian is 4-shot and then Q and the Q will do more damage, right? And then you have another shot if you want, like that. So, unless unless you're far away and you need the dash to go in, a good Lucian will never dash in. Like, if this guy is stunned and I don't need the dash to approach, I will just 4-shot, right? 
Another thing with Lucian is that you can actually do it from far away. Like there's, let's say, this is something I do a lot. Uh, let's get a bit, get rid of level and gold. Let's say that you are like kind of far away. One thing you can do if you want to burst someone from far away is you just throw the W and like you throw the W like that and mark them and then you flash to the W. Right. Because that's so much more damage than, than dash forward, you know what I mean? Like, see that damage? If I do this, it's so much. Uh, Look at, look at DPS, right? It's like 1.5k DPS, but if I dash in... Like, DPS will be lower, the damage is half. So the, the burst is just so much better, in my opinion. Okay, and then... <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you a bonus. If you wanna know any Lucian pro tips, you know how with Lucian, this is a gimmick, but anyway. You know with Lucian how your Q locks on a target? Like if you Q from far away, and you use it, you will walk to him and Q, right? If you do that, again, using the Q on him, and then you stop walking, look at what happens. Your Q still locked on him. So now you can get out of vision and you have like, wall hack on the guy. <laughs> and he will tell you where he is. <laughs> it's kind of funky though, like if they get out of vision, I think it stops tracking them after one second or two. But you know, it's kind of weird that this happens, no? Like a wall hug. I guess this kind of thing is why I get banned. Are you seeing that? He's telling me where the guy is. He's telling me where the guy is. Like, even with no vision, look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't need triggers. Okay, need I wasn't supposed to tell you that one. No, but it's not very useful because I think when they move out of the vision, it's funky. Like, it almost never tracks them. I don't know, it's like very weird. Anyway. Um, so last thing I want to do with you. I'm going to actually go into practice tool with another champion now. So let's get into practice tool with something that is more like auto attack heavy. Um, probably with lethal tempo or something. Maybe Jinx. I think Jinx should be good. Just now, I spoke so much about APM and how do we even increase it now? So let's work on increasing it, right? Okay. I guess we could do Ash, but probably Jinx is gonna be better for this explanation. I don't care about the rest of the runes, really. So guys, for this drill, this drill you will do it 10 minutes a day as a warm-up before your solo queue sessions. It will help you increase your APM and control while increasing your APM. And what I want you to do is not try to run before you walk, because I can do it in a fast, in the highest difficulty, but you gotta start from the bottom and then go up. It's no use, it won't help you if you start with the highest difficulty, okay? So, for the, the level 1, let's call it the easy mode. I call it easy mode, but it's not very easy actually, because even if it's the easiest difficulty, it's... I don't know, maybe the word easy is a misconception. I don't think it's the easiest difficulty, it's the slowest difficulty. Some people have trouble with slow, some people have trouble with fast, so I don't know. So you will get your your three spells and level three. What you're gonna do? So with Jinx, we have two auto attack changes. Notice how this is gonna be hard for you because let me pull out the pen tool again. This is gonna be hard for you because you're not only gonna be kiting on whatever your attack speed is not constant. It's not gonna be constant like this. So your APM is not gonna be constant either. Because your attack speed, you have Q, which will stack three times, and then you have Lethal Tempo, which stacks six out of attacks. So it's gonna be like the first three out of attacks will go up a lot, then it will go up slightly more because of Lethal Tempo. So this is zero, this is three, 
This is six. And at six, you're gonna be at the highest attack, uh, uh, highest attack speed. Right? Oh my god. I promise I'm trying to make a straight line. Okay. That is as straight as me. Um, no comment. So, this, <laughs> this is how your attack speed will look like. So your, your DPS, your... <laughs> your... Um, APM should reflect this. This is one of the main things that people have trouble with in lower elos, which is what the Seaver did in that clip that I showed you. Even though she stacked lethal tempo, her real your APM should if so this is your attack speed, right? It's gonna be attack speed. And your APM, which we will mark it in blue, should kinda be the same, right? It should reflect this kind of graph. In fact, it's telling me to remake. What the fuck? In fact. The APM could even be something like this, like at, like constantly at the highest, so when you finally reach the high point, it's fine. And meanwhile here, you fill it with clicks on the ground. That's what I would do. In fact, that's what most pl pro players do. Even when they have no attack speed, they still have the same APM as max attack speed. So then you don't gotta change it. I think this is the best strategy, okay? Just keeping your APM high. But what a low elo player will do, is they will do this. And even though they stack lethal tempo and jinx Q, they will still kite and use their out attacks at that slow attack speed. Okay. Or another thing that they will do, which is equally bad, is in order to let the champion out attack as fast as possible, they will stop moving so the champion can out attack. Because remember, this whole thing is while you're moving. So let me show you. I coached uh, Varus, I think it was, yesterday. Oh my god, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just blasting and uh, my, my students. <laughs> I think they enjoy it, guys. That's why they're here. Um, yeah, this guy. Jack's Body Double. I don't know what the name means, but it's a really good name, in my opinion. Uh, so, Mr. Jack's Body Double. He was playing Baruz. And I want to show you what happened. You know how Baruz has lethal tempo stacks and when he gets a kill, he gets a lot of attack speed, doesn't he? Look at what happened. I told him that he was missing a lot of damage. That he was not out attacking as fast as he could. So instead of increasing the APM, if he tried to increase the APM and out attack faster, so this is what happened. He was doing this. And I told him, dude, you could be out attacking so much faster. But he didn't want to do this, you know why? Because he would have lost control, because he's not used to it, he hasn't done my drills. And because he would have lost control, instead of doing that, what he did was... Fuck it, I'm gonna stand still, let the champion do this by himself. So... Gotcha. <laughs> and this is something that you see a lot in lower reels. But look at this. Look at how he started with 0 0.8 attack speed, and look at the attack speed he will have now. 1.2. And he will have even higher when he hits Lulu. You should kite the Lulu with higher attack speed. Instead, he's more comfortable... Look at this. See? Okay. But now Lulu got away! Because he's standing still and not moving. And also he's taking minion around, also this is just never do that, okay? Like that's like the worst thing in the world, and my eyes bleed. I love you Jack, but come on, right? Never do that. And why is he doing this? Because he wants to keep the out attack... He wants to keep the attack speed up. Well, uh, without taking the APM up. So this is what happens when you don't have high APM. So this is why Redditors are wrong, God damn it, and I will die on this hill. <laughs> Surely Redditors can't be wrong. So, how does this look like? I'm gonna tell you one last piece of advice before we do the drill. The advice is the following. A low elo player. The advice comes from APM is very very related to using what we call clicking on the ground okay you gotta use the ground low elo players don't use the ground so a low elo player it, it feels bad to call low elo right let's say less skilled 
When you have less skills. Ah, come on, dude. Okay. Haha, ah, lower, lower elo. Okay, a lower elo player will click on the target. Okay, will input on the target a lot. And a lower elo player will input on the ground. Ah, on the ground, very little. Okay. A higher elo player, a pro player, a better player. A giga chat. This is cringe, right? And this is chat. Um, <laughs> a, very, a higher elo player will click on the target one time for each other attack. Or two maybe, but you know, very little times. And will click on the ground. Many, 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 many times. Okay. So let me show you what I mean by this. When I show you, you will understand what I mean. It will it will it will be so obvious when I show you, right? Let me stack the Q stack so it's always it's always the same. Actually, let me stack this tempo as well. There we go. So we have constant attack speed right now. So what I will show you. A lower elo player, remember, will click on the target many times and on the ground very little. So a lower elo player will look like this. Okay. That's what a lower elo player will look like. A higher elo player will look like this. Uh, let me go to a more comfortable area. There we go. So a higher elo player will click. Yeah, so remember, lower elo, you click on the target a lot, and you click only once. Okay, a higher elo player will click on the target only once and click on the ground a lot. Okay, so like this. Okay, so you see how I'm clicking more on the ground and I'm only clicking when I need to on the guy. Okay, and it's looking like smoother, isn't it? Even if you're going in one direction only, like the idea is that I'm, I'm not going in one direction, but even if you're guiding in one direction, it just looks smoother, right? Like, it looks like scripting, right? It looks like lighting. Right? So, that's the difference. So, why is this the difference? Like, we're not doing this to show off, right? Well, first of all, when you click more than once on the enemy, I, I said this already in one of the sessions, so you already probably know this, but when you click more than once on an enemy, you're just wasting time, right? Because the time window you have to auto-attack someone is literally one click long. And if you click more than that, then you're just losing distance, right? Because the idea is that between each other attack, you move as much as you can. And if you input more clicks on the target here, instead of moving, you should have moved the whole duration. And instead you clicked many times on the target, so you ended up moving only here. And also because you clicked only once, you moved in a straight line, whereas I'm moving like I'm, you know, circling. I don't know, doing circles, right? I don't know if you're seeing what I mean. Like I'm moving like... Sometimes they do what I call the triangle, which is like when you do a triangle, you look like you're doing a circle because of the ping. Because you have you don't have zero ping when you do a triangle, it like rounds to a circle. So you can do that between the oh, between the auto attacks. So my attack speed is way lower now because of no lethal tempo. Okay, and I'm doing it with right click. Even though in a real game you could use A click like that to not miss the auto attack. Um, but I like doing right click just to practice even more. Part of the part of the APM drill that I told you is um, to to get control. So if you if you do this drill with A click, in my opinion, you perhaps will not learn how to control as much. In my opinion, maybe you can. I mean, doing it with A click, you're increasing your APM, right? So maybe that's even better. But what I would do, if I was you, this drill, I will do it with A, spamming A a lot, but right-clicking on the guy. So you get the best of both worlds. You are increasing your APM by spamming A, but you are forced to aim on the guy properly. So maybe I would do it like this, you know, like spamming A, but actually right-clicking on the guy. So if I miss on the guy, it's actually going to make me lose like that. See, I'm spamming A. Okay. And so there I missed the auto attack and I walked. Yeah, it's good, but I want to teach you control. I want to teach you to aim properly. So the idea, this is a drill. That's that's like telling me, yeah, but shouldn't you 
put your groceries in a car and not lift them. Yeah, but the whole point of going to a gym is to lift the weights, right? So it's like telling me, well, but in my in the real life, I put my groceries in the car. I never have to lift 20 kilos. So what's the point? Well, yeah, but <laughs> that's the point. It's training. <laughs> it's training. It's training. They are like, oh, but, but in real life, I never have to lift 80 kilos or run a marathon. Um. So... What's the drill? So much talking. So the drill level one... Well, yeah. So the drill level one is gonna be... First step is measurement, okay? So you measure... By the way, this is not gonna be just the DPS drill. This is gonna be APM drill while controlling. The idea is that with this drill, you're gonna train how to increase your APM while having control over everything, okay? So, just click on the guy. You don't have to pick Jinx, by the way. Pick whatever you want. And I'm gonna wait until a thousand or so total damage. Or maybe two thousand. Let's do one point one point five. There we go. So in one point five my DPS is eighty one. That's the maximum DPS, even if I give my, if I give my computer to Faker or Gumayushi or whatever, they're gonna get the same DPS, right? It's, it's impossible to get higher. Well, it is possible with one tiny bug that exists. Well, not a bug, but if you do this, that's gonna show you something. This is how you shouldn't cheat. If you move closer to the guy, because my auto attacks took less time to get there, I'm gonna get higher DPS. Well, it's not enough to move the DPS number, but if you if you get closer to a guy, your DPS goes up. Because the auto attack takes longer time to get there, right? So, <laughs> ideally, if you can, in the drill, maybe you can do this. Like, put a line of words and be like, yeah, I shouldn't get... Uh, I shouldn't get... In the front of this line of words, okay? So that you don't cheat the DPS. So, the idea is that now you're gonna have to try to get 81 at 1.5k. Again. But, 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 but... There are rules. So rule number one, you gotta look like a high elo chat, not like a low elo cringe. Meaning, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, it's just a meme. Meaning that you gotta, you gotta click on the ground. Remember, how, how did we say it was? You click on the ground a lot, you click on the enemy only once. So if you ever do this, clicking two times on the enemy, disqualified, start over. No, just kidding, maybe don't start over, but you get the point, don't click twice. But on the ground, they want you to click many times. Things to avoid. Pay attention. Avoid clicking all the time in the same direction, like this. I wasn't doing that, right? I was clicking back and forth. Another thing to avoid. Clicking far away from your champion. That's really bad, okay? So it should be close. Try to make triangles or back and forth, whatever you feel comfortable with. Try to not go in and out. A real ADC should never kite in and out unless it's spacing or chasing. Instead, you kite side by side to keep the max range. Um, or like in the triangle. And then, there's another point here. There's another difficulty. You thought we were done? No, 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 no. The reason you're going to increase the APM is that every three out attacks... You're going to refresh your cooldowns like this. And every three out attacks, you need to use your W on the other guy. And it doesn't, the DPS doesn't matter. The reason you're doing it on the other guy is just to not change the DPS on the main guy, right? So that's gonna increase your DPS even more. The idea is that you keep your DPS at the maximum while moving a lot and using your W and E. Maybe do like, maybe do like every, every second out attack E, every third out attack W, something like that. You can mix it whatever you want. But it should be... So like that, right? So I'm getting the same DPS almost. Um, it's hard. And if you don't do it properly, you will lose DPS or you will lose distance or whatever. So another thing to avoid is clicking too early on the guy. Because you only have one auto attack worth of time. Uh, like one click, sorry, to auto attack the guy. It means that that single click has to be perfectly timed, right? Because if you time it too late, this is what happens, right? Look at this. If my auto attack on the guy is too late, I'm gonna lose DPS. So look at this. Now I'm doing what the 
I'm doing what the Severe was doing, right? Which is clicking too late on the guy, and I'm losing a lot of DPS. Sure, I'm kiting properly, whatever, but I'm clicking so late that I lose damage. So I'm essentially doing the lower APM thing. I'm, I'm doing the... Remember the graph that was like out attack and APM, or APM has to be higher? Well, I'm doing like a lower APM like this, so my DPS goes down. I'm out attacking slower than I could. And then the other mistake that you should avoid is clicking too early. If you click too early on the guy, you're gonna lose distance. So if I click too early, like this, look. See, I'm clicking too early, so my champion stops moving sooner. Sure, I'm kiting or whatever, but my champion stops moving. You're not laughing. Right? So, click too early, lose distance, click too late, lose DPS. Get it? And you can just increase the attack speed when you feel comfortable, but there's one last thing. Which is, now you're gonna learn control. Uh, let's get like random attack speed items. So the DPS is gonna be around a thousand and a hundred, right? What if? And you're gonna hate me for this one. So you know how you can do the same drill here, like try to get a thousand DPS while hitting the guy. That's with right click, right? So if you miss, you lose. I'm not missing on the guy. So what if you try to do the same thing, but you put the dummy? here and with just right click you do the same meaning if you miss you hit the raptors right so this one is probably the harder one i hit the raptor so this one requires a little bit of warm-up when you hit the raptor you control m to remove the dummies like what i hate about this one is that the, the raptors actually hit the freaking dummy oh sorry that was a mistake so a little tempo. Okay, like that. We are losing the DPS. And as you can see, we gotta get like the same top DPS. Don't cheat, right? I'm not cheating by if you use see how my cursor changes there? That's target champion only. If you if you do target champion only, it's super easy. Don't do it. Like the idea is that you do real right click without target champion only to practice aim. This is how you practice aim in league. Um, that's what I do usually. Oops, I missed there. So you will miss some. Uh, you can put it here. Okay. Oopsies. Well, this one is harder because now the, the raptor is in front. But this is how you avoid uh, misclicking so much in the future. Just practicing this. Okay. And then you can do it with even higher attack speed if you want. Uh, the last level would be like, you know, getting... So this is 3.3. That's harder, I think. And that's just right click, right? Um, the thing about right click is that if you miss, it's hard. So usually with this attack speed, I haven't seen, not to brag, I've never seen a player, even pro players, kite at this attack speed with right click. They all, always do it with, you know, that one. The, what do you call it, attack move? But for me, it depends on the situation, I guess. I can do it with regularly, but just because I practice this type of thing a lot. And I don't miss her. And also, I think I can do it with regularly because I don't lock my camera. So it's always like the same type of movement. Right. I can do it with A click, but it's kind of slower. Okay. Anyway. That's the drill. Um, so this at high attack speed one, maybe you don't mix with. Maybe you can mix it with throwing ease or like you know using exhaust or whatever. 
like try to guide it and at the same time use, use exhaust it's kind of hard but anyway uh you can practice it with with w on low attacks field the one i'm most interested is like level 3 to level 10 with only zero to one item and then using w in between but remember about doing it well right like avoid clicking early avoid clicking late avoid clicking far away click close you gotta click a lot on the ground only one time on the enemy uh, measure your dps make sure you're not losing dps for distance so that's the drill and you will get your so when you see that and you see my nickname that's why you get banned right because people go like oh, I'm about to see anyway and you will dodge more as well it's gonna be really 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 important so i told you all my secrets now i'm gonna lose my job Ha <laughs> ha